having us here this morning. Um, I'll I introduce myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you were going to go on. I was just going to yeah, say, going. yeah, um, outside of being Bob's sister in law, I'm also Skylar. 3,500 uh, advisors across Canada trained to serve you. And, you know, just what I need to, how I work. Um, always, uh, I work from a remote, my remote office, so I live actually in Middleville. But I have clients over here in Smith Falls. Um, I have a lot of people in Mississippi Mills, Carlton Place, um, up in Calabogie. So I travel. I, I don't. Um, the uh, the central office in Ottawa is our central office, but I actually work out here in the country, and I generally go to people as opposed to having them come into the office for to see me. Um, so why we're we here? Protecting your savings, but protecting you over a lifetime. So this is a standard timeline for everybody. A a anybody, young, old, kind of, is somewhere along this timeline. Now, as we see here, we, as we get older, we think more of health needs. But with your unique situations, this health needs might be brought back down here because your children have a lot more needs than standard children. In the stress of that sometimes causes you to have higher health needs as well. So this is, you know, standard, but everybody is in here somewhere. Be it building for the future, so from your, when you first get out of school and start working, until, well, you know, when, we, when do we really start thinking about retirement? Well, 50, maybe 45, 50, 55. When we get into this, and that's when we try to pump up our savings, and then it's then living in retirement and what your needs are. So this is standard for everyone, but everyone also has their unique story and their unique needs. We just need to look at that individually. So planning. What we're going to share is just some financial planning 101 ideas, right? So, so obviously, each and every one of you in the room is so specific. Your needs are specific. Your family dynamics are specific. And we're absolutely very aware of that. So this is just finance 101. It's not necessarily sun life. It's just general planning, right? All, all planning starts with where do you want to go? How do you want to get there? If I can use an analogy, think of a hockey team. A hockey team may know who its opponent is, but they have a defensive line and they have an offensive line, right? And, or football, you can think about it. So financial planning, if, if you don't mind, Jane, sure. really starts with having a plan, both objectively, and uh, which means where we want to go, and defensively. Let me use that practically. This is a defensive plan, meaning that if any advisor that you work with, whether it's at the bank, guys, or whether it's a boutique shop, whether it's with an advisor, Desjardins, Sun Life Advisor, we can all help people take a look at the money they have to invest and the cash flow you have, and we can help you understand rates of return. But if all those we do is take a look at how to help you grow money, and we don't teach you about how to protect your money, we've basically just given you 50% of the solution. So when we look at a family, we look at how are you defensively? Because each of you in the room um, is your own best asset. Your ability to make money, to bring income into your house, to be able to provide care for your, your children, to be able to get yourself to doctor's appointments, to get medications, maybe it's, maybe it's a chiropractor. All of you need to be able to make money to be able to take care of those you love and to take care of yourself, right? So when we look at any client's plan, we look at you defensively. We look at, and what's another way of looking at it? It just means the what ifs in life, right? Because if all we do is gain money, and we don't have, let's say, a disability plan or something to protect our money, where are we going if something happens on the way home from work, where's that money coming from? Is 
that fair? Am I, am I with you? You guys are with me? Okay. So defensively looks up. Many of you may be partners in care of your children. Uh, maybe you are single, and I don't know everybody's um, you know specific story in here. But when we look at clients, we look at what are your liabilities? Are you the main income earner? Are both parties of, of a couple income earners? What happens if one of you is not making money? Perhaps you yourself become disabled, or as Jane referred to, become stressed, burdened with stress. How does that look in your family if somebody breaks down either in terms of income flow or premature death? Does that happen? So our job is to plan for it. So we look at things like, what are your liabilities? What type of health benefits do you have in place? What don't you have in place? Maybe you have group benefits, which is fabulous. But each of your stories are different. So group benefits is basically wonderful to have, but I think of it as the icing on the cake. What we do is we take each individual in this room and put a customized plan together. So we look at each of you defensively, and then, um, as Jane's gonna show us, we look at you then offensively. And that means each of you perhaps have income flow. What does your savings look like? How long will it last? Is there enough savings there to help meet your future needs of your children that you've brought on and the responsibilities that you have incurred? And, and they are major because we spend a lot of time planning and thinking, perhaps praying about your decision to bring on children into your family and we just want to ensure that the financial will never be an issue. So we look at, is there cash flow? How is your debt right now? Do you have any emergency cash put aside? And if not, how can we find that? Because emergencies come up with all of us. So our job is to just think of it as a teeter-totter. That's the easiest way for me to explain it. All plans are based on the what ifs and how can we keep saving. Okay? And if we have that in balance, then we're doing a good job. So if you go somewhere to save and invest, make sure guys are talking to you about the, the what ifs of life. Not just the rate of return. It's important, but that's only part, it's only part of the plan. When we look at each of you, if you look to the left and to the right, is the people beside you, do they have the same needs as you? Is their life identical? Absolutely not. So group benefits is basically one times your salary, etc. Um, customized financial planning takes each of your stories into account and where you want to go. And then after that, you can get into, I mean, this is financial planning 101. There is higher needs, real estate, higher investing, more risk. But that's really not what we're here to talk about. But that is truly finance 101. And so that's really what a plan is. And we look at everything from your lawyer. Do you have a will? Do you have powers of attorney in place? Like as a planner, we can refer you and help you make sure that holistically you're well looked after. So now that Sean just, you know, giving you a little overview of financial 101, um, one of the things uh, after I became a, an advisor and sitting down and talking with Shelly and Rob, and uh, I started doing some research because of their unique case, because of especially the kids' unique case. What happens when someone with FASD, it grows into adulthood, how can we protect them? How can we protect um, guardians and caregivers of people with FASD? Well, and, and one of my first questions was, is someone with FASD insurable? And I didn't know. So I call up and I find out, yes, yes they are. Um, and can someone, because you know, we have different part of our financial planning, um, we have different types of insurance products that actually accumulate growth. Well, can someone maybe on disability actually, or, or would they be able to keep something like this? Would they be able to have um, a, a plan, a life insurance plan or policy that actually uh, accumulates wealth and has value. Well, yes, they can, up to $100,000. I did not know that. Um, and that's outside of the $40,000 in personal assets that somebody on ODSP can keep. So 
Um, and I've been working with our underwriters, and I kind of am, I, I wouldn't want to call myself an expert at yet, but I'm really becoming, um, I, I'm really working with it because it is a personal interest just from working with Shelly and Rob, and of course Samantha, my oldest niece, who is now 30 and uh, married, working, um, and able to do this. Of course, she's not on ODSP, but she is someone who has um, fetal alcohol and has a lot of struggles. But she's, I guess, um, a success story of someone like that. Um, so that being said, I'd like to, uh, if you may, I have a couple of scenarios. Um, and I'm, this is where we're putting you to work. So, because <laughs> um, I need your input, because I've, I've seen it peripherally, but I need to know, um, you know, what I'm missing. So I, I want you guys to fill in those holes for me if you can. So I have family number one, and I have Julie and John McRae. Julie is mom, and she works for the federal government. So she has a really, really good benefits package with the government. I'm gonna write, okay? I'm just gonna grab There was Sun Life. <laughs> she makes about the $60,000 a year with the government. She, you know, goes in and uh, travels into the city every day. And she's married to John. And John works in construction in the summer, and in the winter, he does snow removal. So with those two, he makes about um, $55,000 a year. So they're doing pretty good. Um, they've adopted siblings, brother and sister, um, both through the children's aid, and both the kids have FAS. Um, they are a uh, little girl is seven, and little boy is nine. But they're very comfortable that they are financially prepared for this, and just in case anything happens. Um, as I said, they have really good health benefits of, through Julie's government plan, and um, like she has her um, life insurance through work is two times her salary, she has her dental, she has her medical, all that. Um, they have a mortgage and they have just their mortgage, like they have a mortgage through the bank and they have the mortgage protector insurance through the bank as well. So they think they're pretty good. Um, so, did we get your one yet? Just thinking about the kids, me as not knowing, what kind of um, um, expenses would they have on a regular, ongoing basis with their kids? That regular, you know, that, that children without FASD would have, uh, would have, like, um, therapy. I'm going to make a list here, yeah. okay? So this, and it, like, a lot of these are going to be covered under mom's health benefits and that. So what about therapy, pardon? Testing is not covered. Testing? Yes. Expensive testing. <laughs> Expensive testing. And do you know, are, <laughs> is that kind of testing covered under benefits? No. no, so that's straight out of pocket. Well, he's not under ours. No? No. And okay. I haven't seen anybody that had it. Which testing? The, for the psychological, the whole... Oh, the some benefits do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, some well, benefits do. Not just just three different portions. Oh, yeah. Right. And it's not all covered. Right. Some of it is, but all that. Depends. Thanks. I'm good to find Yeah. 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 Sort of these. Yeah. Even has a pretty good plan. It's not Yeah. So, so there's so those therapy. Yeah. Therapy, testing. Um, I know your kids are off to the chiropractor. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're covered under plan, but they're, yeah. they're covered. Yeah. 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 Our kids are chiropractor. Okay. Yeah, my kids never, never had to go to the chiropractor, they, you know, so this is what I mean. These are some expenses that I think a lot of you go through every day just through raising your children that, you know, are for, for someone who hasn't experienced it. Even driving to doctors and yeah. yep. yeah. yeah. Because we have a huge amount of yeah. travel. A lot of driving. Travel. <laughs> travel. Driving, okay. gas, parking. Travel and everything associated with it, okay? Yeah. Even the maintenance of your car would be yeah. really part of that cost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. now, mom, Julie, travels in to work every day. She's, you know, going down Boyer Hill Road and one day she's going into work, car accident, mom gets killed. So, John has his two kids. 
Um, he's able to continue through Julie's benefits, but he's actually got to pay those out of pocket, but he's able to um, continue those benefits. So he's able to convert, but the, in that case, you've got to do it within 60 days. So with everything else, it was just, he, he remembered to do that. And he has her life insurance and of course the, um, the uh, house is paid off. But nothing else. So now John's single dad and... Um, what about her pension? Her pension? Yeah. It's in the morning that before he can even go out to make his $40,000 a year. So, so part of what we do, even though obviously you know Sun Life, we do insurance and we do investing. But when we do personal financial planning, we take this type of scenario into account. So what we do is we're proactive and we look at what are the true costs that you all, each of you are incurring right now that maybe you don't necessarily realize. Maybe you don't necessarily articulate. So we can, Jane and I can do planning such as, so you have two children that are fairly high needs. And I did a bit of reading, my background is nursing, just for what it's worth. And, and I did some reading in that the average cost of raising a child um, is $2 million from birth until adulthood. The total physically and financially, right? That's what John <laughs> now Jane has another scenario, if it's okay, if you guys are getting something from us, just it's, it's there, but listen, you know, open conversation about it. Yes, you have a question. I'm getting a new job. You're getting a new June. job? June. Congratulations. Yeah. That's great. It's a new job. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely great, right? I hope they have benefits with this. Yes. Just wanted to ask, um, sorry, how different is Sun Life Financial from the other financial services? The paying job. The job. How do you do that? And the paying job. Um, how do you do that? And the paying job. That's good. The difference, the um, one thing is we've been around for 154 years successfully. We're a global company. 26 countries, 26 countries, and um, the over the years we have like we've changed. You know, we as uh, as the world changed, as financial um, rules and everything changed, we change with it. We grow, everything's growing. A financial plan um, is always a living document. And one of the things with Sun Life is, is us as, as advisors, we have to make sure that we are always available and always in touch with our clients um, and reviews. We want to keep going. It's not just, all right, let's just write this up and we're done. I'll see you if you ever need me. No, I'm calling you up. I'm making notes. If there's anything going, I'm calling you up. I'm meeting with you once a year. I want to make sure that everything is going well with you, if there's any changes, how we can tweak this, how we can make this better for you, how we can keep this, um, I'm saying your financial plan is a document, but it's, it's a living. Yeah. But I, I think just to support what Jay's saying, we're not just transactional in this career, we are relationship builders. So we build relationship, we get to know where people are now, where they want to go, and how we can help get there. But to answer your question about Sun Life, because I've been around for a little bit longer than Jane, so I should know my facts, right? <laughs> Yesterday I was sitting with a, a, a wealth specialist, and Sun Life currently is the, is the largest institution in Canada with the most assets under management. So we're 26 countries around the world. Uh, we're traded on three stock exchanges. We have the largest career sales force in the country. Um, and as Jane said, an average advisor, we're just not downtown Ottawa, we have sub offices. And so as Jane said, we're about community. We're about people in the community. And that's why I'm here because I was an Ottawa Valley girl. I was Renfrew County, but I've moved to Carleton Place. And, and, and truly, people who are attracted to this career, just like yourselves, attracted to care and to take on, we are attracted to help people in our own communities. And that's 
That's why Jean is such a wonderful fit, for example, in this career, because it's not just head office. We're right out in the community, understanding people, knowing people. So that's called a career sales force. And we have a career sales force, and Freedom 55 has a career sales force, which are people on the street, um, set up sub offices, and actually get involved with their community at a community level. I hope that helps. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay now. What are you looking for? Um, another thing, just this is my own, everyone's different, but I don't have office hours per se of nine to five. Uh, most of my client visits, because most of my clients work, right? So, yeah, I don't want you to have to take time off, come and see me during the day. I'll go see you in the evening, Saturday, Sunday. That's a lot of my, I do my paperwork during the day, maybe call in, but at night, my face to face meetings are at night and on the weekends, just because it's, easier for my clients when your life is busy and tough enough instead of trying you know trying to get in there to see the uh, financial advisor is just one more difficulty so if we can make that part of it easier then that's what we want to do um, i'm going to do scenario two a little bit quick we're we're getting on time um, so i have marie and frank and they marie, marie and frank jones and they're grandparents of Jody, and Jody has that for us next. So they're in their 50s and um, thinking of retirement and getting things ready. And they, they, they realize that um, Jody's not in a good place, and they decide that she needs to come and live with them and, and the family that's so Jody's living with, Marie and Frank. Now, Marie and Frank have always been planners. Um, they uh, have a financial advisor, and so they had their plan. They were in this point here, getting ready for retirement, getting those that money all up there, so they could have at that point of retirement they can have a good lump sum. They could start pulling down. But now with Jody, life has changed. Everything's new. So after they get all of their ducks in a row with Jody, get her settled get everything settled, they call me up and they say, we've had a huge change. We know it's not another four months before we do our financial, our annual review, but can you, can we come in and see you? I said, I'll go see you. We've got a little one now, I'll, I'll go see you. So we looked at their, their plan and what they needed to change. And one of the things we needed to do is we had to change their will because they were now Full guardians of Jody, but they had to find someone to um, power of attorney. In case something happened to them, somebody had to look after Jody, somebody had to make some decisions. So their daughter, Jody's her son's child, so their daughter, Lily, um, had they had kind of talked about it. So they're gonna to talk to Lily about being a power of attorney. But another thing they had to think about is guardianship in case something happened to them. So they talked to Lily about that. So if something happened to them, what would happen to Jody? She couldn't just go into the system and that. So, um, so they're gonna have that talk with Lily as well. She's She has a good relationship with Jody. She has children of her own. They don't think it's gonna be a problem but they're gonna have that conversation. But now, going back to what Chandra said, how much is it gonna cost, Jody's five now, um, and how much is it gonna cost, if something happens to them, to raise Jody? They realized they needed new life insurance policies that um, in case something happened to them, for Lily, to raise Jody. So they put in new life insurance policies. They got everything set up. And um, so, and we, we got that all in step for them. And the next thing they're gonna be doing is talking to, sitting down with the lawyer and with um, Lily to make sure that Jody is all set up. It took maybe an hour because there was a lot of things to go through just that. But they now know that should something happen to them, Jody is taken care of, and Lily is taken care of financially to help raise Jody. Just a little bit of planning can take part of that stress and ease off. 
and it doesn't take a long time. It just takes a bit. So at that age, in the fifties, getting like a whole life insurance <coughs> that'd be very expensive for them. Yeah, just about money. Okay. Yeah. So, um, would you want to me? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. So when it's a great question. So there's two types of insurance. Okay. So there's whole life. This is just a general one-on-one. -on -one if you guys are okay with this, life insurance is designed to do two different things. One is for, and you will. I'll, one is I'm going to draw it if that's okay with you guys. <laughs> when we're all born, we are all born with the liability of our passing someday. We don't know when that is. Oh, heaven help for all of us in this room. May it be old. I think scripturally we're supposed to live to 120. So that's my stand. But, but bottom line is we're all going to have funeral expenses, taxation expenses, and probate expenses at the end of life, whenever that may be. That is covered by a whole life policy. A whole life will never terminate. If you live to 120, it's still there. Okay? Most people don't need a whole lot of money for a whole life policy. Because end of life expenses are not that ex Think of the, the cost of a funeral, think of taxation, probate. 50000 I'm in the career and I have $30,000 on myself. That's it. Okay. So this is called whole life. Just think of, do you ever hear the terminology again? Whole life or permanent because it's permanently attached to you. Okay? The other is called term insurance, guys. And this is what really we're referring to. Okay? Term insurance, when Marie and Frank took on the cost of raising Jody, remember the liabilities you guys just told me about a minute ago? Okay, that's therapy. That's driving. That's the car. What else is there, guys? Doctors. Doctors appointments. Medications? Yes. Medications. Some are covered, some are not. You know what else I, I think we may be overlooking, too, is even the cost of educating. Educating our thing. Some kids eat their clothes. <laughs> well, think of clothing. Think of education. Think of, guys, even just the day-to-day -day raising of a child. Like, there is a true cost of raising a child. Simple things. Even, you know, hockey, um, taekwondo, soccer, whatever. You know, that, that's, that's there, too. Right? And, and not only that, the cost of putting money aside for the RESPs. Perhaps, candidly guys, perhaps uh, your child will never go to university, but could be a, a wonderful at a local college level. Just saying. How do we start saving for that? How does Frank and Marie start saving for that now? Okay. So when we put together a new plan for Frank and Marie, we're looking at the cost okay. If Jody is showing signs that, that that could be possible, let's put some money aside in the term policy, which is a short-term liability. So if something happened to either of you, there is money there for their survivor to set up college for, 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 for uh, Jody. Can I explain that okay? So we, when we put together a term plan, it's a temporary plan. It's probably only going to last for 20 years. Right? Because Jody's five by the time. So we're going to put to, together a, a term plan for a short term period just to make sure that if something happens to one or the other, the cost of raising Jody is immediately there for the survivor. The cost of term insurance is quite a bit cheaper than what the cost of a whole life policy is. Um, and of course, always the bottom line is can you afford it? Can you tweak it? You know, I mean, Marie and Frank could not afford $2 million of life insurance, and we, that's not what we did. It's, it's a lot less than that. But it's what they could afford, and it's what they felt comfortable. And, and that's all part of the conversation. That's all a part of your individual story and, and, and everyone's individual needs. So what percentage more, say if you have term, say 250000 in term, you pay X amount a month for that. How much more would that be in whole life? For the same amount? For the same amount. Here's the, real, here's the one thing that I need to say. The point is you don't need to have 250 at the end of your life. For whole, so, whole. For whole life. Because you're actually paying for that policy to never ex expire or terminate. The cost of that literally could be 20 times more. 
If I remember, yeah, if I remember correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, sure. but so I was 50 something when we took out the hole, and the only, the only, um, and Robert was, was seven years younger, I'm very young to know.